my next guest is, I think, my buddy of 2020. <laughs> I, you know, like, she's been my buddy of 2020, my DM uh, buddy, and my uh, Zoom buddy. Say hi to Tia Lix. Or as I yeah. sometimes say, hey. or sometimes I say, Tealy Wixie. Tealy Wixie, I love it. Because that's that's very much my nickname, has been versions of my nickname over time. Tealy for sure is, uh, that's across the board from since I was a little kid to even now as an adult, my friends still call me Tealy. Tealy Wixie. <laughs> Tealy Wixie. And Twix, my email in college was Twix, so... I was then called Twix for a very long time. And then I became a good fan of the candy bar Twix. So I don't know what I'm trying to say. You should be a Twix Send bar, me Twix. For I, yeah. Twix bar for Halloween. <laughs> I could be a Twix bar. I need a sponsorship from Twix because that would be great. Yeah. Because it's my name. Yeah. So. So if Stephanie J. Block can get a sponsorship from Crest, you can get us, you can definitely get a sponsorship from uh, Twix. Twix. <laughs> so for a majority of quarantine you were in the big city in yes. the city that never sleeps so what is and was the most challenging part of quarantining in such a big city right um well it was really tricky because since it is a big city um and I have a great apartment but you know it's a small New York apartment mm -hmm. and because at the start of sort of, of the pandemic in March, New York was very much the epicenter of everything. And it was kind of scary because it was also in the beginning where we really didn't know what was going on or what the virus was like. So it was scary to go outside because there's so many people just out in the world. I mean, there's, I live in a building, so I walk outside of my apartment door and I'm sharing a stairwell with all the people who live in the building and also the delivery people who are coming and going and the mailman and the super and the, and the you know exterminator and all of that so yeah. it it very much felt like we had to sit inside the apartment and not leave for at least like the first month because we were freaked out yeah. and that's very very trying if I was somewhere else where it was like my home and I had a yard and then had a car I could get into that at least is still my own personal kind of space or mm -hmm. outdoor space and I could do that with avoiding people but it was even just like walking out my apartment door into the stairwell you know foyer of our building was even that was sketchy oh, yeah. so it was hard so I spent so much time inside luckily I had a window that I looked at and I, I watched the pigeons every day I, <laughs> I don't I'm not a big fan of pigeons but after watching them from a window in a while, for a while, it was, it kind of became a little bit, I'm very intrigued by the pigeons. Yeah. Yeah. In your next Broadway dressing room, you can have a little sketch of a pigeon. Or like oh. a pigeon, or like a pigeon, like maybe like Beanie Baby in your next dressing room. That's actually, that's, ooh, that's cute. That actually is. It's been very, very interesting. Um, Cause I've, as I've said this before, there is, sort of in the very beginning when, you know, in my month sitting in my little corner in my own little, in my own little corner in my own little chair. Anyways, that, you know, Cinderella thing. Yeah. But it was the usual sounds of the city were gone. Like it felt, it sounded like there were no cars. There's kind of just a hum of city life and that was gone. And all I could hear were bird song from the pigeons and the doves and all the little small like sparrows. Mm -hmm. and then sirens because I lived near two hospitals so it was very it was a very interesting city soundscape for the first like couple months yeah yeah so were you nervous uh those times where you had to go into the stairwell of your apartment uh during those times where you like had to like go downstairs and maybe get the mail or go down and take the garbage to wherever you take the garbage to were you yeah during those times yeah, and laundry, because we have a communal laundry uh, space in our basement, and I would, you know, I'd put on a mask, I would wear gloves, I would uh, take um, 
uh, disinfectant wipes with me if I was doing the laundry and like wipe everything down. And then I started getting paranoid about, this is when it just got a little too excess. Like I was like, this is too extra for me right now. We gotta like calm down the craziness, not mm -hmm. the craziness, but just the, the brain, the spiral of like, oh my God, if I touch that, I'm gonna get it. But like trying to pull my laundry out of the washing machine and into the dryer. And if you I know. put my hamper down, do I put it down? I would bring like, oh, a towel to put the towel down to put my pamper on it so my hamper when it sat on my floor in my apartment it wasn't picking up stuff oh I don't know. it's you just like the things when you're living in well city or just any sort of place that you share communal spaces you kind of take for granted how often things are being touched by assortment and variety of people yeah and then in pandemic mode, it was like everything. I was like, how many people have touched this? This floor is so filthy. Like how many people have walked on this floor? And then I'm going to bring that up into my apartment. All of a sudden I became like a germaphobe and I've never been a germaphobe. Mm -hmm. It was, it, it was, it, I was definitely going into a, to a not super healthy psychological place. <laughs> yeah. Did you like spray things with like disinfectant spray all the yes. time? Yes. And... Yeah. Cause we, when we would get food delivered, cause I wasn't, didn't go grocery shopping. It took me, I think for the first month, we didn't go out to buy things. We had things delivered. And luckily also in New York, everything can be delivered. Mm -hmm. But when we would get the groceries for things that had to go into the refrigerator, we would wipe down, spray down, put in the fridge, things that didn't have to be in the fridge, we would just leave sitting on the floor for at least 24 hours to let everything just disappear. That's what my mom did. My mom, we'd get home from the like the pickup, like the pickup place uh, for yeah. the groceries. Cause like in the suburbs, you can like order your groceries, like on it, like on your phone, like on the app, like the grocery yeah. store app. And then you can go there and you'd like back into the space and the people come out and they put the stuff in your trunk. And um, my mom would, the second we get home, she'd unpile, do all the groceries and spray it all down with Lysol mm -hmm. before putting it away. Mm -hmm. I know it's, Oh my God, we were going through um, like Clorox wipes so fast. And then we would try to get like, just like the spray because we didn't really buy it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't find it anywhere because everything was there's sold a, out. There's You couldn't find it anywhere. There's a million Walgreens and Dwayne Reed's in New York. They were they, literally every single, when I did eventually go out into the world and go into the stores, every store within like the 10 block radius of my apartment that I would go to for various shopping the cleaning section was completely out of any like Clorox brand or Lysol brand oh my god of any sort of yeah it was it was intense oh my god but there was toilet paper yeah at least there was toilet paper at least there was toilet paper yeah yeah it doesn't really matter what brand as long as there's toilet paper yeah Just give me something Give me something. Oh yeah. So during the pandemic, you started your little Tuesdays with Teal, which is something I religiously tuned into every single week. Mm -hmm. um, will you bring it back? Yes, I will. A lot of people have asked me to bring it back. So I will. I just, I'm, I might, it might not start until 2021. You know, we're not that far away from 2021. Um, yeah. Also while I'm out in California right now at my various houses with very slow internet it's not going to be a pretty sight yeah. trying to do a you know a, an instagram live with like one bar of wi-fi so yeah so i i will bring it back because it was it was really fun and it gave me something to look forward to and to prepare for mm -hmm. and to to be a creative outlet and it was also a really fun way to get my friends to sort of join and then a way to like celebrate my friends. It was fun to try to play like a host and come up with questions and games and yeah, you know, have a, have a sort of dynamic with my friends that one on one we don't usually have it. And I want to celebrate people and like talk about all of the fabulous things they do and have them talk about themselves and their lives because I find them fascinating and wonderful. And I want yeah, everyone and else to as well and show off more hats, show off my hats, and do fashion shows with all the crazy clothes that I have that I will never be able to wear in real life because I because I just can't I actually brought out some hats um today 
I just got three new beanies at there's this store that you would love if you ever are in the Michigan area and like there's like this little like city and there's mm-hmm. this store where they have like these Detroit like merchandise so I brought up bought out some hats to model today Detroit one. 313 nice I have this one. Oh, cute is that like purple yeah it's purple with yellow writing oh I dig it I mean, those are Lakers colors, which since I'm a NorCal girl, the Lakers are not my jam, but still it's cute as a hat. And then this one. Oh, a little rainbow. It's a rainbow. That's so cute. I love it. I I wish I had a hat on right now. Are you a beanie person or are you just like a fedora person? No, I am a beanie person. Come winter, beanies. Because the hat, my, like the all the brimmed hats are not so, I need my ears covered in the winter because my ears Mm -hmm. get really cold. So I love beanies. Um, I definitely have not collected beanies as much as other like brimmed hats. I think they're more utilitarian than they are fashionable, but they can be fashionable. Yeah, especially Um, now. Yeah. They're so fashionable and I have, they're the only hats that fit my head. I have a giant head. I've always had a giant head. It got to, when I, like 10 years ago, my doctor was so concerned that my head is so giant that she made me get an MRI on it that's how (laughs) giant my head is so (laughs) so beanies are the only things that fit my head and Mm -hmm. I love hats right so it's like when in doubt put on a beanie put on a beanie yeah what I don't have a ton of I don't really have any baseball hats like baseball caps I have some trucker hats but Because I have a small head, a lot of the like trucker hats or baseball hats just don't quite fit me right. Because either they're too loose or like too compact. And I also, yeah, anyways. Yeah, I have two and I was able to get them at a hat store like a couple of miles from where I live. Mm -hmm. And I was able to, it's like they have hats in every shape, size and form, like baseball hats in every shape, size and form. And so you found one. You, I you found got one. one. My Dodger hat. Oh, uh, Dodgers, huh? Do I have it in here? No, that's just my squid hat. I bought a squid hat when I was in Virginia with my school my freshman year at Bush Gardens. <laughs> is it shaped like a squid? Or does it have, have a squid to... on it? What's going on? What's going on? Share. Should, mo- should I model it? Yes. <gasps> oh my God. Yeah. I bought this when I yeah. was on a complete sugar high. I had so much <laughs> sugar in me that I bought this and I wore it on a bus for 12 hours straight. Oh my God, that's so cute. It's my squid hat. Oh my God, that's so cute. And I, my mom tried getting me, telling me to get rid of it the other day and I told her no. 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 I don't know when I'm going to need this, whether it's for yeah. camp because I work at a camp like in the summer when it's not a pandemic or in college or something yeah I need this hat I mean it'd be I mean you basically have half of a costume right there if you wanted to be like a squid or some sort of sea you know sea sea. themed exactly this is the one I was telling you about Oh yes, Selena Gomez. Yeah, that's cute with the little pom pom. Yeah, I wore this at a Selena Gomez concert, and I was gonna take the pom pom off, but my mom told me don't take the pom pom off because you'll be less noticeable. I understand. I understand. I like the pom pom. It's so cute. I have a whole bag of hats. Oh my god, girl! I have a whole that's bag, amazing. all like beanie related, and then there's the squid hat. When in doubt, go to Target for beanies because I get my beanies at Target sometimes. Oh, yeah. So many. Yeah. Those are good. Yes. So <laughs> moving on from beanies and as much as we both love hats no. <laughs> and our many tangents, which are very fun tangents. I know. That happens all the time. Especially when I talk to you. Especially when we talk. Yeah. I'm real good at tangents. I'm really good at um, killing time and distracting from, you know, the main thing that we're all here for <laughs> same same okay. same right. 
I did it to my tutor all the time in high school. She'd be like, Jamie, if that is, I want to show you the video of my child uh, playing with the dog. We have to do math. We have to do math. (laughs) So what were the holidays like for you in California and how did they change when you moved to New York? Mm. Oh, yeah. Let's see the holiday. So in California, um, I mean, growing up, it was my, my parents got divorced when I was pretty young, but they always lived really close to each other. So I, I spent equal time with both of them growing up. Um, and so the holidays were always like at least two families or Thanksgiving is one of the biggest holidays, especially on my dad's side of the family. That was sort of like, we always go to grandma's and have Thanksgiving at grandma's. Um, but then I would also swing by my mom's and then Christmas was kind of split up, but it would be growing up. It was like, put on a cute outfit and we're going to spend a lot of time house hopping to see all the family and eat all the foods and do all that sort of stuff. So it was very, very festive, but also, you know, sometimes stressful. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But then moving, since moving to New York, sometimes I made it back for the holidays, but it was really, really fun to, embrace uh especially like the christmas sort of season like christmas hanukkah season and i mean anyways all all the holidays that that come you know basically thanksgiving and on yeah it was it's so festive in new york city it's it's a completely different energy that i didn't really experience in california i mean it got festive here in california but never quite like New York City like the city oh just, yeah it comes alive it's so beautiful the lights everywhere decorations yeah. everywhere people seem to just be kind of sweeter and a little more like um just kinder and uh and also being in New York or just being on the east coast the seasons mm-hmm. the seasons truly truly happen and you get us you can feel the shift in the seasons and having that shift from summer into fall and it's so clear. It's getting a little less clear now because of, you know, global warming and all of that. Yeah. It's sort of going from summer to winter and you get like a week of fall. But yeah, before that, it was kind of, there was the transition. And then when fall is clearly going into winter and things would just crisp up and being in New York around Christmas and having snow when it does snow, it just, it was so, so magical. So it became actually really fun to stay in New York for yeah. like the Christmas holiday and whatnot. Yeah, my dad told me, cause he would go to New York a lot in the winter time, like when he was a kid. And he told mm-hmm. me that it's so, it's so cool in New York and it's a great time of year to go and over the holidays to New York, it's just so cold. It is cold. Yeah. That's, but she said that But you just, too. you just layer up. Like we would, we would go and look at all of the holiday windows at all the um, department stores and we would like layer up. We would put like tights or leggings on underneath our jeans, have mm-hmm. a bunch of layers and our warm, warm coats. We always go and get something hot to drink, like, you know, like apple cider or hot chocolate or something like that yeah. and, and walk around. And, but it's just so like, I mean, the big giant tree at Rockefeller Center. Oh right yeah. The park has- they found an owl in the tree. Did you hear that? No. They found oh. a baby owl in the tree that they brought from upstate New York, like from like the farm yeah. of New York. They brought the tree down to, and as they were setting it up in Rockefeller Center, they found a baby owl. So what are they going to do with this baby owl? I don't know what they're doing with it exactly, but they had to take it out of the tree to, so it yeah. doesn't get pulled by the lights. Yeah. I hope they're taking they're, care of it. Yeah. I think they're taking it to like a zoo or something. Mm-hmm. But they found a little baby owl. I saw it on baby uh, owl. CNN or something like that on Facebook. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, that's sweet. So yeah, I know it's so festive. Mm-hmm. It's I love, so festive. Yeah, I love looking on YouTube and like on social media. I like the, what the themes are for the different stores. Oh yes, because oh I love Saks Fifth Avenue's Christmas. Yeah, because they go all or nothing. It's true, yeah. they do. Yeah. In the past my favorite years, oh wait go ahead the pet my favorite um it's like they've done disney movies and i'm you know i love disney so like i love the different disney movies they've been able to pull off the past few years yeah i know i'm trying to remember i can't remember i can't keep it straight but one my favorite store window display is bergdorf goodman's because it's always super like 
artsy and oh god it's just so cool there was I can't even remember what they did last like one year it was through the deck it was like decades and then one was very specific about New York and but they're just they're so they feel like so like high art like super artsy kind of avant-garde sometimes and oh god it's just it's the best amazing it's best, and I just yeah. sit there and I look at the because there's also some sort of clothing you know like because it's a department yeah. store Perfect. the mat they'll have like a mannequin that will be in some outfit and just oh god those clothes oh yeah I love like oh, last so... year Saks did Frozen because of Frozen 2 coming out so like Adina Menzel came and performed and they did like a whole thing and a few oh. years ago when uh Snow White turned eight uh turned 80 <gasps> They had the whole Snow White thing. I remember that. I watched yeah. it on Facebook Live. Hmm. As I was unloading my dishwasher, I was watching it. I'll never forget. Oh, <laughs> unloading my dishwasher and watching the Saks Fifth Avenue dedication of the Snow White uh, window display. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. And you love Snow White, right? That was my girl. Snow White's your girl. Ever since I was two. She's my phone case. Oh, look at her. And then this is my background. I'm like, oh. oh yes. Oh, that's so cute. Disney. Did I mean, you like the um the like what were they like the Huntsman movies? The Snow White and the Huntsman scared the crap out of me. <laughs> it also wasn't made by Disney. That's true. Yeah. So Disney does have a live action Snow White in the works, but they got to do a whole mm. bunch of other ones before they get to. Oh my it. gosh, to be the evil queen. Oh, because now I'm you know now I'm of a certain age where I'm like. I'm not a Disney princess ingenue no more, but I could be an evil queen. Come on, uh, Teal's agents, if you're seeing this. Yeah. I mean, like, Charlize Theron, I still don't know how to say her last yeah, name, in the yeah. Huntsman things as the evil queen, like, oh my God. She's like a goddess, a bad goddess, but a goddess. There was a different one with uh, Lily Collins as Snow White, mm. and Julia Roberts was the evil queen. Ooh, see, I'm on board for that too. Oh, that was like, I just watched, oh my God, again, we're on a super duper tangent. I just watched um, that like live action Cinderella with, um, oh, with I don't uh, remember her name, her the name girl was that was in Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey, Lily James. Um, Lily James and, and Kate Blanchett as the wicked stepmother. Oh, and Helena Bottom Carter as the fairy godmother. Helena oh my Bottom God. Carter. She was also good as um, Queen of Hearts. Yes, she's good in everything. Oh, God. And Kate Blanchett is dream, dream. Oh, oh yeah. God. Okay, sorry, we got to get back on track. So what's your next question? <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, have you and Tom created any special traditions since you've been together? Because you guys have been together from what uh, Jackie Burns, Michaela, um, who else? D. Uh, who else? Bowman. They've all said you guys have been together for a very long time. Yes, we have been together for a very long time. Um, yeah, well, in the holiday, you know, since this is a holiday special, when we do stay in New York for like the Christmas holiday, we started our, our tradition on Christmas Eve. We do a dinner and we go do the, we find a restaurant that's an Italian restaurant and do the traditional Italian feast of seven fishes dinner, which is just super fun and delicious. And we go to a different restaurant every time we do it. And we love seafood and fish. And it's just, it's, I never really knew about that tradition until, you know, just one time reading about what to do mm -hmm. for, I think the first, our first Christmas that we stayed in New York and we were like, okay, let's, what do we do for like a fancy dinner? And I started just looking up, you know, best, Christmas Eve, Christmas, whatever dinners in New York and a few brought up the Feast of Seven Fishes. And then I was like, I'm in, I'm in. And that became our tradition. Yeah. And, and we get a tree. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We always get a tree, which is kind of a pain in the butt just because, you know, trees shed and we have to carry it down the block and up our stairs and into our small door. And I mean, we usually get a small tree, but Every year we, we, we push it a little, the tree a little bit bigger than it should be. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then leave it up forever because you put so much effort into it. Like Kelly and Jared. It. Yeah, 
I mean, like we're gonna keep it up until the first warm day. I wonder what they they how they gauge warm, like. You know, I'm like, what is there a temperature? Have they just have they set like when it's above 65 degrees? Is that warm? Or is it when it hits 70? I don't know. So describe your 2020 in one word and describe what you hope your 2021 will be like in one word. Ooh, yes. Um 2020. Unbalanced. And 2021, oh, okay, um, centering. Ooh, I like it. Centering. A lot of people said unexpected for 2020. Mm, I mean, but, yeah. But, but I like the change. I like that you changed it up and didn't say unexpected because yeah. like everyone said unexpected. Oh, I mean, it is unexpected, but it also, it went more than that. It, you know, it was very unbalancing. It was very like, whoa, whoa, where am I? That's why I'm hoping the next year will then be like, and here's your center. You are now sturdy and can get back on a path. Yes, come January. Let's hope. Oh my God. Come on. Come on, Joe. We want a life. Okay. So anyway, it's game. <laughs> it's game time. Oh, it's game time. Okay. And you're going up against Diana DeGarmo and Carolyn. <gasps> Woo! All right. <clears throat> and <laughs> as Diana said, the alpha buzz against me. <laughs> That's exactly what D- Diana DeGarmo told me. She's like, the alpha buzz against me? You're putting me against two alpha buzz? Uh, thanks a lot. I'm like, Diana, you're going to be fine and you're going to be alpha one of these days. I will I not. Know. I'm surprised she hasn't. It's probably just a matter of time if she wants to do it, you know. Yes, I want her to play Jenna in Waitress so badly because she mentioned something about how she wants to play Jenna in Waitress. I said, if you're Jenna in Waitress and Ace is Dr. Palmiter, I would be there in a heartbeat. Oh, cute. I mean, can you picture them singing Bad Idea in in that scene? Yeah. Oh my God, it'd be so- How amazing would that be? I could not imagine having to work to- well, I've never really dated an actor, so I don't, but yeah, playing, you know, playing in a scene opposite your significant other. Well, even like um, Christine Dwyer and Matt DeAngelis, like they, because they're married and they were on tour together for Waitress and he played Earl. Oh! And I, I was like, could you imagine having like that, like having to play, hate your husband who is actually your real husband and him being such a jerk to his like wonderful, sweet, beautiful wife in real life. Anyways, that that's a good relationship if they can get that done and still stay together and also on tour. Anyways, yeah, I'm amazed I, when people do that. Diana and Ace are like couple couples goals. They've done Joseph together. She was the narrator. He was Joseph. They did Grease together. They've done all these different things where they they've been Danny and Sandy together. <laughs> in Greece they've done all of these different shows and stuff together and they're supposed to tour again but you know yeah pandemic uh, pandemic exactly pandemic. And she did okay. Jekyll she also did Jekyll and uh with Constantine Morales oh yeah in um Korea yes and in North Shore, and in North Shore. she did a North show with yes. Constantine Morales so I asked her if she knows you yeah we've met like once at a concert that was it yeah, because I asked her, I remember, I said, do you know Teal Wicks? She's like, I know Teal Wicks, but I don't know Teal Wicks. Yeah, yeah. I think we met at, oh, a Dolly Parton concert, which, you know, I was like, of course she's here singing Dolly. That's all taken and no given. It's a rich man's game. Yes. Look at you knowing all those words. Love to drive you crazy. That song has gotten me through quarantine. I've, I've listened to it every single day in quarantine. Oh my gosh. The start of it. Yeah. Okay. Wait, we got to do the game. We got to do same, the game. Same all time. Right. Another one of our tangents. Hashtag Teal's ta- Teal and Jamie's tangents. Teal and Jamie tangents. <laughs> it's tangent time. Oh, oh can't touch this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yes. I got the moves. 
<laughs> I would stand up. I just have a bunch of stuff on my floor. Yeah, I'm not Let's standing stand up. up. Do a hammer time. Let's see what time. Okay, good. We have plenty of time. School Great. game time. First word. You know the you know the drill. One. I'll tell you a word, okay. and you gotta either sing a teeny tiny snippet or just tell me a song with the word. And it doesn't have to be Broadway. It could be pop. It can be whatever the hell you want. I don't care. Really? Um, the first word is B. Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. Whisper words of wisdom, let it be. Beatles. Beatles, baby. My best friend loves the Beatles. The next word is down. Oh, down, down, down to the bottom of the mountain. Down, down, down. Forget the next lyric. It's a share song called Down, Down, Down. It's a really good song. Oh. It's a great song. It's, I think it's from her Foxy Lady album, which became my favorite share album. Only share would have an album called Foxy Lady. I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> only, only share. Yeah, have an album she, had, called Foxy. she was like dark lady, but I'm also a foxy lady. Dark lady, which is that. why lady, like, which is why lady me yeah. is named lady because that was literally her albums from the seventies, her like yeah. solo albums. Anyways, yes, dark lady left and dance at the handles. Blah, blah, blah. Ashley Fitzgerald does a flip in the air. God. Oh my God. The next word is rock. Mm. Rock steady, baby. That's what I mean. Do now. Let's call this song exactly what it is. What it is, what it is, what it is. It's a funky low down feeling. What it is. Anyways. I don't know. Rock that steady, song. baby. It's Aretha. Oh, um, she's a she's a bop. Oh, Detroiter. She lived like 15 minutes from me. <gasps> oh my god, that's like holy ground. I would pass her gated community on my way to school every day. Or I do pass the gated community she lived in on my way to school every day. Oh, Aretha. Mm. Pass it every day. She's brilliant. Oh god, magic. The next word is together. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I, I yeah okay um um come on people now smile on your brother everybody get together try to love one another right now yep all of my songs are like 60s 70s right now that's i guess that's where my brain the, is you're gonna have to educate me with the artists because i don't the only oh, yeah. 70s 80s 70s that time of music i know of is sure that's all right. That last song, Come Together, was, um, I think it's Young Bloods. So many people covered that song. It's a good song. The next word is cry. Mm. <sighs> what? <laughs> I just, because I was like, another like song from the 60s. Cry to me. Uh, uh, when your baby leaves you all alone and nobody calls you on the phone don't you feel like crying don't you feel like crying don't you feel like crying well come on cry to me oh yeah solomon my, burke obsessed i love that song so much i feel like my dad and my uncle are gonna know like all these songs when they watch yeah. this for the first time they be like oh yeah. i know this song i know that song like, oh Tell me and my best friend too because she likes like 70s and 60s and 80s music oh yeah She'll know it all i got I, I gotta feel i gotta come up with a current song and feel hip i'm not hip the next word is strong oh i mean because i'm strong enough to live without you strong enough and i can't I'm totally screwing I up the lyrics. Quit I quit crying long no, enough. Now I'm strong enough to know you gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. Go, 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 go,
China blessed thing. There you oh, go. Hang on. I know. China blessed <laughs> thing. I have it broken. I have it broken. Broken heart, but I'm strong now. Strong enough to rise above. This is a woman. <laughs> I'm letting out my, I'm do, kind of doing my Michaela impression as I'm doing this because she has like her little dance moves that she always does. Oh yeah. She always just like. I know. Yeah. And I, so like, I ha, so I had to do my little Michaela impression. She's going to be so proud. Wait till I show, wait, wait till I tell her. That was her. good. I was like, I know that dance. You did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I ever told you this story, but once upon a time when I saw Cher in concert. Mm-hmm. Uh, she sang when she was singing strong enough she tripped so when there's no more to say trip as after right. she said say she tripped and as she tripped she said shit so she there's no more so me and my best friend now say there's no more to say shit oh, shit <laughs> <laughs> that's so we'll be, hilarious so when we're singing we're, we'll sing the song in the car and be like there's no more to say we just yell shit there's no more to say shit <laughs> <laughs> The next word is world. Oh. Well, uh, because we were just singing it. This is a woman's world. This is a woman's world. Tell the truth. This is a woman's world. Tell the truth. Bum, bum. This is a woman's world. Because I'm strong now. Strong enough to rise above. This is a woman's world. Yep. Anyway. This is like so. <laughs> I could, I can probably do, I wonder if I, if I had the finale playing, if I can do the whole number, because I've kind of watched it online so many times and I've oh, seen yeah. it and oh, I yeah. listen to the song. I'm sure I can do the whole thing. Oh my God. Totally. I want that song to then be thrown into a mashup with, you know, who around the world? Girls. Squirrels. Who around the world? Girls. Squirrels. Who around the world? <laughs> Squirrels. No. Squirrels will not run the world. Squirrels. Yes. Those little, those little sneaky nutbags. Mm -hmm. nope. <laughs> I know it, it's definitely girls. Girls run the world, but it's a joke. I always say squirrels because it is funny. Squirrels. The next word is happy. Mm, mm, mm. I was be like, forget your troubles. Come on, get happy. We're gonna chase all the kids away. Sing hallelujah, come on, get happy. We're headed for the judgment day. That song I actually know. Yeah. And then if I was better, I would then mash it up with like the the Barbara. Anyways, there's that famous Barbara Streisand, Julie Garland mashup that's like, ha never mind. I'm not even gonna do it. I don't remember. The next word is mean. <gasps> Ooh, okay. All right. I really don't have a good, good um one, but I have this, this randomly popped into my head. What? I don't even remember how it was some the bad, bad Leroy Brown. He was the meanest dot, some man or dog or boy in the whole dang town. Badder, badder than old King Kong, meaner than a junkyard dog. I remember learning that in that song in elementary school for some reason. It was like one of our, you know, morning, choir group sing songs yeah <laughs> and the last word is good Ooh, good 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 <laughs> i'm laughing at myself um um oh i'm just gonna do it because it's you know the i have been changed for good. Dun dun dun. Hug, hug together. <laughs> it will be, and we will never meet again in this lifetime. So, so let me say me. before we part, so much of me is made of what I let on you. This is my pop version. He'll be with me. Oh, maybe Britney Spears. Like a hand on my heart. <laughs> and the stories end. I know you have me in mind, but you're my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that's it.
that's all I got. Share be like, I could come and pull from my pocket. <laughs> Like a calm, like a calm at pool from orbit. Does it? Mm, I can't even. Okay. Does it pass? Pass is a song, song, song. Like a sea drop by a sky. Now I'm, now I'm going into country. I'm going into country share. <laughs>